Hey everybody, welcome back. I um, am going to show you something that I think is very interesting today. Um, these are wax cylinder audio recordings. And if you take a look at that picture, that's actually Thomas Edison, uh, the, uh, the famous inventor who, among other things, invented um, this uh, type of audio recording. And, uh, well, between the late 1800s and very early 1900s, this was the standard for audio recordings before the uh, phonograph kicked in. Uh, these were for um, graphophones. And they ranged from two to four minutes. As you can see, this was a four-minute recording. And then uh, some of these were shorter. This one was put out by Columbia, from the Columbia Phonograph Company. And uh, Talking Machine Record, Extra Loud, High Speed. And uh, just give you a look at this very old uh, packaging. A Columbia Record. If it's a Columbia Record, it is good. Columbia Records are beyond competition either in quality or in price. We confidently invite all users of talking machines to make trial of our records in comparison with others. Right for the latest list. And you it also says you could get band, orchestral selections, vocal, instrumental solos, operatic selections, stories, monologues, or by clever comedians, or all the latest popular songs. Another thing people did is they actually could um, either buy um, blank cylinders and make their own recordings or they could uh, scrape off the wax and record over these wax cylinders. Now, um, the name of the selection would be printed on the top. In this case, it's uh, Uncle Josh Buys an Automobile. And this was a uh, comedy solo by Cal Stewart. And um, it's uh, trying to find a date. It says Thomas A. Edison patented 203. 1583. Uh, it's probably uh, late 1800s or early 1900s. Uh, to take out the wax cylinders, you would take it out like so. And then, I don't know if you can tell this by looking, but it actually tapers a little bit to the left. So it's actually wider on this end than it is here. That's how part of how it played. If you look carefully, you can see that it still clearly has grooves in it. The inside you can you can see it's wax on the inside so let's carefully put this back in considering this is well over a century old this one um, this one was also by Cal Stewart Uncle Josh in a cafeteria and uh, you could see the Thomas Edison patent stamp right there Notice that the inside of the tube is uh, lined with cotton, very soft, so the cylinder wouldn't scratch. This uh, cylinder put a, uh, this is a two minute Oxford here. Uh, it's by Columbia, it's uh, I Wish they Do It Now, this song. Uh, if you heard the tune, you'd probably recognize it. It's been redone several times. It's an old Scottish tune from around the 1700s, uh, redone as a Civil War song later on called The Wearing of the Grey. You might uh, you might recognize it. And this, uh, this cylinder has been damaged, so uh, it's uh, got a good crack in there, and it's obviously not fit to be played. If you take it out you'll see that the uh, wax is long since decayed it's well over a century old these are just uh, empty cases but I think they're interesting nonetheless uh, once upon a time uh, you could see what was on it they might have been home recordings and then you could see the detailing of the packaging now how did these work so um, let me try to show you here basically um, the player was something like this it had sort of a spindle that the cylinder was put on say that's the cylinder 
there was a needle that would come over and it would play and as the cylinder played it would move in the direction of the needle to keep playing it for two or however long minutes and that's how the tapering worked and then there would be a speaker you know like the speaker the dogs always looking into like this and that's pretty much how it worked this was not a long recording this was a two or four minute recording so you know it didn't last very long it was uh, replaced now what I want to do is play for you some wax cylinders so you could get an idea of uh, what they sounded like. I'm going to start with um, this song right here called They Do It Now or I Wish They Do It Now so you can actually hear exactly what this cylinder sounded like. So listen and enjoy. So, could you hear that? Kind of hard to hear. Anyway, uh, another recording I want to play for you is a home recording. And uh, in this case, it was the sound of a baby crying. And I think it's uh, interesting. Uh, it was... Um, it's not unlike uh, a home movie of a, of a baby that would have been done now. And I just kind of thought it'd be interesting to look at this old uh, picture postcard that was done of baby Jake and a little chick. Uh, I would say in the early part of the 20th century. So uh, let's listen to the sound of a baby from the uh, late 19th century or early 20th century. Totally candid in someone's house. Completely unknown except by the sound of his cries, or her cries. So enjoy. Well, that was one angry baby, wasn't it? If you uh, were to listen to that recording all the way to the end, uh, you hear a woman's voice say, Baby Song, January 1st, 1892. So it was just the sound of a, of a newborn on New Year's Day. So uh, it's, it's really fascinating to uh, hear these recordings. And uh, now I want to tell you that... Uh, I do not have my own wax cylinder player. I actually um, got uh, these recordings, or I played these off of the uh, Cylinder Preservation and dig Digitalization Project, which uh, you can find online. And they have a huge database of wax cylinders where you can listen to them and uh, enjoy the sounds of the past. And at some point, it would be interesting to actually send mine to uh, the project. Uh, and have them recorded for all time. Instead, it, it's interesting though to know that I'm holding in my hand the sounds of a century ago. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, please uh, rate, comment, and subscribe.